Good evening, and happy Sabbath. This is my favorite time of the week, this next 24 hours. After a busy week, it's nice to kind of slow down, take a deep breath, and enjoy the blessings of this day. Tonight, uh, we are talking about the importance of rest and sleep. We're going to start with a story. In 1996, seven-year-old Jessica Duboff was attempting to be the youngest student to fly across the United States. Accompanying her were her father and her instructor, her pilot instructor. The first couple of days went well, really well. But by the time they got to Wyoming, the media was on the heels of the instructor pilot, waiting for and asking for interviews at midnight and early morning. That night, he talked to his wife, and he said, I'm exhausted. He said, it was, everything was all about the media. He was losing sleep. He was stressed out. And as a result, he had lost lots of sleep. And he said how much he was looking forward to being finished with this media zoo. The next morning, while preparing for his flight, well, the little girl was the pilot, but he was the instructor, but he was preparing, and he had an impeccable safety record. Just his reputation was just the best. And he always had checked the weather. He was so exhausted, he forgot to check the weather. Well, as a result, they took off and they flew directly into a storm. The plane crashed and all were killed. Interviews with the ground staff at that airport in Wyoming later revealed that this very very experienced pilot with an impeccable reputation for safety, had started the engine. Now, I, I don't know if you start it like you start your car, or I don't know how you do it. But he had started the engine without removing those blocks they put right you know, under the wheels. He had forgotten that. And so, of course, somebody came and pulled that out right away. But that's something that every pilot does. Um, and so that was another evidence of his extreme excessive fatigue. Sleep science tells us that tired minds are much more likely to make serious mistakes. And we're going to learn a lot about that tonight. And most, society, most societies today, a significant portion of the population is sleep deprived. In the United States, fatigue is one of the 10 most common reasons a person visits a physician. The need to rest and relax seems to be the greatest where there seems to be no time for it. Without rest and relaxation, all human beings suffer cognitive impairment. Tired people become inefficient. They become slower, and they are not as safe. And they make more mistakes because of it, just as the story illustrated. To remain on, at the peak of our game for peak performance and abundant en energy, we must celebrate the refreshing gift of sleep. When our brains are tired enough, we will go to sleep involuntarily. These short periods of rest are called micro-sleeps and usually don't last longer than a half a second to one or one or two seconds. Now, that may be okay if you're sitting in your chair at home, but what if you're using heavy machinery? What if you're driving your car? Should we be operating complex Machinery, when we are that tired, definitely not. These lapses of sleep or 
these microseconds of sleep can result in tragedy. Many of the increasingly chaotic, um, our chaotic world, where we are going 24-7, it's a world that is hard to fit enough sleep into our days. And the growing problem of sleep is just affecting basically most people in this world, and I would imagine most of you tonight. Our decision-making takes place in our frontal lobes, and that is the most affected part of our brain that is affected by insufficient sleep. A growing body of evidence shows that sleep deprivation impairs our cognitive performance, which in turn influences the quality of our decisions or our emotional control and our efficiency, our pr productivity and our safety. We all need sufficient rest to restore the wear and tear of life and our bodies. Fascinating research has established that when we are tired, the executive functions of our brain suffer. We become less effective at recognizing the choices that are available to us, and we, let have, we are less capable of choosing which choices to use. Even if we can clearly see the choices, we may not be able to act on what we know we should do. Our creativity is reduced as well as our efficiency. How many of you have experienced that? Am I the only one? Oh, good. I see other, <laughs> other hands. The frontal lobes of our brains are where we combine the current information from our senses, what's around us, with the previous learned information that's in our brains, and our life experiences to make decisions. This portion of the brain is most affected by insufficient sleep and rest. Fatigue lowers our cognitive efficiency. It lessens the awareness of our surroundings. It reduces the ability to produce new information it decreases our long-term memory and impairs the learning of new information. So why do, we, why do we as students, and I did this myself, sometimes stay up most of the night studying? It doesn't pay off, does it? Because of sleep deprivation. And because success in almost all of life's endeavors is determined by the choices we make, by the decisions we make, it is vitally important to get the rest we needed. We can suffer dire consequences if we don't get that sleep. Sadly today, there is a ubiquitous intrusion of personal, social, and cultural activities in the, the time that traditionally has been used for sleep. Sometimes I wish we didn't have electricity anymore. You, you read stories about the olden days. They got up early with the sunshine. They went to bed when the sun went down. Consequently, today, because we can stay up all night and have light, attention spans, and, and we lack sleep, attention spans are diminished, judgment is impaired, and our ability to carry out complex mental operations is reduced. When we miss out on sleep, we accumulate what is known as sleep debt. As this accumulates, we become less productive. Research was conducted, and this is really interesting, it was conducted um, with four groups of people who all had demonstrated the same level of skills in performing identical tasks. And so they were, on, they were on the same level as 
far as performance and ability. Their productivity was, after 21 days of activity, they had studied these, their productivity was significantly, significantly reduced as their nightly sleep was shortened. After the full 21 days of measurements, the productivity of those who got seven hours of sleep each night per night dipped to dipped 8%. The group that got only six hours of sleep per night, however, saw the pro productivity drop to 55%. While those getting four or five hours of sleep were able to produce only 35% and 20% respectively of what the seven hour sleepers produced. And they would have, the seven hour sleepers would have produced more had they had eight hours. Current research, however, is finding that even moderate sleep debt is and healthy volunteers can alter their metabolic rate. We used to think that sleep deprivation just had an effect on our brain and our emotions. We all know that when we're really, really tired, we're more, it, we tend to be more irritable and we tend to not have as much control our, of our emotions. We're more emotionally labile. But they are finding that sleep deprivation now also affects our metabolic state in such a way that it mimics the glucose metabolism of diabetes. After four hours of sleep for six nights, healthy young men experienced a 30% decrease in their body's ability to metabolize carbohydrates. They experienced significantly higher levels of the stress hormone cortisol, we've talked about that, and a decrease in insulin sensitivity. Do you know what happens then? This and other research suggests that there may be a link between the growing epidemic of sleep deprivation and obesity. The more tired you are, the more likely you may be to gain weight. Adequate sleep time should remove most daytime sleepiness and provide a sense of calm, well-being, alertness. There's so many advantages to good sleep. So how much sleep do we need? People may vary on what they can get by with. Um, most researchers say we can get by with seven hours. But generally speaking, we do much better with eight hours. Studies have shown that if you have a really long working day, 16 to 18 hours of wakefulness, listen carefully to this. In healthy adults, the result is an impairment comparable to the legal blood alcohol level of intoxication in the United States and in many other countries around the world. Should I say that again? This is how important sleep is. A long day of 16 to 18 hours of wakefulness, you are at the same stage or point of, of impairment as if you were under the influence of the, of the legal blood alcohol level of intoxication. So, which is, um, I, it varies in different countries. So, we need to learn to value sleep, the importance of it. It affects our mental attitude, our physical bodies, and our productivity, our safety. It's really important to learn to value sleep and establish a regular bedtime. And 
it's, it's also good to dim your lights about an hour before you go to bed, to play soft, soothing music, to cut out all screen time two hours before bedtime. It's good to have a cool room where it's not too warm, and actually it's good to have fresh air. Open your window and get some fresh air, even during the winter. Um, and it's good to keep the same schedule of going to bed and getting up even over the weekend. I know that's hard but because you're trying to catch up, but if you do it all through the week, and I mentioned this before, the hours of sleep before midnight is, are twice as effective as those hours after midnight. So an earlier bedtime is better and an earlier wake-up time is better. That way you use your time more efficiently. Um, use a comfortable, firm bed and a quiet, cool bedroom. Another thing to remember is you need to... Wait a minute. Eat, eat lightly, lightly in the evening. It's best if by the time you go to bed, most of your food is digested. If you eat a heavy meal at night and you go to bed on a full stomach, you're likely to have bad dreams and your sleep will be more fitful. It will not be as restful. Avoid as much as possible any stressful events. If you have unresolved issues or if you have momentous decisions to make, don't do it right before bedtime. Have bedtime be a calm, relaxing process. If you have trouble sleeping, if you have trouble sleeping, you might want to see your doctor. Some people have sleep apnea. Their breathing actually stops for a matter of seconds or even longer. If you have that or you suspect you have a problem, you need to see your physician. Because if it's a problem like that and you let it go too long, it can actually affect your heart. So it's nothing to be embarrassed about. It happens to a lot of people. And um, so just take note of that. As humans, we all have limitations. We cannot work around the clock. We are not robots. We need sleep. We need rest to maintain a happy and productive life. We need rest as much weekly as we do an annual break to provide for our mental and emotional recuperation necessary for creativity and positive family relationships. Optimal physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual health require adequate, adequate rest. The Bible records that in the very beginning, God instituted a weekly rest to provide a much needed break from the tedium of a work week. Our Creator knew that in order to function optim optimally, and we needed a balanced daily rest in addition to a weekly rest, as found in Exodus 20, verses 8 to 10. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it you shall do no work, you nor your son nor your daughter, nor your male servant nor your manservant, nor your cattle nor your stranger that is within your gates. The Lord wants us to fellowship with him, especially on the Sabbath. He created us as his children. We are sons and daughters of God, and he longs to spend time with us. Part of the blessing of the Sabbath rest comes as we support and relate with others during these special hours. Christ said in Mark 2.27, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. It's a gift from God, a day on which to worship him, a very, 
him in a very special way. Daily sleep and a weekly rest empower us to be more receptive to the blessings of God, physically, mentally, emotionally, socially, and spiritually, thus continually restoring all of us to optimal health. So God bless you as you celebrate the Sabbath and remember the importance of rest and sleep. It will affect every single aspect of your lives. May God bless.